All right, so here we have a recent project that I've been working on. I'm kind of in the middle of it, and it is a Philco Model 112B uh, Super Heterodyne AM radio. Um, as you can see, I've pretty much completed all of the uh, electronic restoration of the chassis. And just to give you a little idea of what this thing looks like, um, I don't know if you can see it, but here's what the finished product should look like when we get it done. Um, very nice radio. It was one of the first radios to feature an angled soundboard, which was supposed to improve the sound quality. And the uh, the cabinet that is currently down in my wood shop, and I've purchased all the veneers to re-veneer it and so forth, and just waiting for the weather to clear up a little bit. And uh, maybe that'll be a, more in the springtime here that I'll be working on that. I thought I'd fire this thing up today, and just as I suspected, basically I get nothing but squeal and so forth. This seems to be one of the most finicky radios when it comes to uh, alignment. All these little, if you kind of look down inside here, down in there, you can see all these little places where you're supposed to, there's one here, one there, one over here, one over here, one under this thing. And these are all the alignment adjustments. They're actually uh, compression adjustable mica capacitors. And you can't use a metal tool on most of them because it affects the calibration. There is a fiber, like a quarter inch hex drive alignment tool that obviously is made of un unobtainium nowadays. You can't find them, you can't get them. And it's very hard to get any kind of tool down in there to adjust them accurately because they're hard to turn and uh, get it to track properly. And even when you do get it to track, if you wait and the weather changes and so forth, it'll drift a little bit. So this is definitely a temperamental radio. So today I thought maybe I'd play around a little bit and uh, let you take a look at this. Maybe we'll open it up on the bottom later on and look at some of the interior and uh, see if we can get this thing to align. I've printed out a, another copy of the... Uh, schematics as you can see here and uh, in that wild how they did that now this is the newer B model and if you notice that push-pull outputs are the type 47 tubes which are uh, they're like a tetrode type tube and supposedly they had a lot more volume but they had also a lot more distortion than the original A model that had a set of type 45s so, I have to admit though, these sound really, really good. I mean, when everything's working, it sounds pretty good. And believe it or not, you can see all the original globe tubes that are still here. Some of these have been replaced, but these are the original globe tubes. And this radio, I believe, was built in 1937 or so. So, clear back in the 30s. So, amazing how long these tubes last. Uh, they still have the original Philco stamp down on the bases so that's pretty cool um, basically every single capacitor in this machine had to be replaced and I did restuff some of those little Bakelite coffin capacitors with modern ones and put them back in to look original but there were a few of those uh, I'll show you one here's the coffin capacitors right here that's kinda what they look like and you melt this wax out and you can put a regular capacitor inside and then fill them back in with something. And then there were these little metal cased ones, which are just basically a paper foil, you know, type capacitor wrapped up and stuck inside here. Some of them had resistors with them. And I stuffed a couple of them just so to give you an idea of what they would have looked like. But I left a couple of them out because it's just, it's a pain and, you know... I didn't do a truly faithful reproduction inside. I figured people aren't going to really look at the inside. They're going to look at the outside and listen to how the radio works. So, anyways, uh, printed out a very lengthy <laughs> description from a Philco calibration manual. And uh, I can tell you, I remember when I first 
did this about a year ago and did the calibration it wasn't easy so we're gonna make another chance at it and try to see if we can get it to calibrate in and then maybe uh, see how it performs but as of right now I have a feeling we'll calibrate it and it'll work today and then come back a week later and it'll be a little bit out again but that's how these were all right okay so <clears throat> here we are and strangely enough this is such an old unit it actually has an IF frequency of only 175 kilocycles so if we look over here for a minute see if I can adjust this a little bit for you and we go up and zoom in on the waveform generator you can see I'm at 120, 175 kilohertz. I have minimum amplitude on my output. And I'm modulating. I had to turn it down to only 20% modulation at the 400. So, really, really low output. And when we turn this on, you can hear we have some signal. So let's get you back down here. And let's take a look. So as you can see, they have you disconnect the top cap from the first detector, and they want you to directly inject your signal right into the grid of the first detector tube, and we're going to make our adjustments from there. Now, right from what I can hear, I have a very strong IF signal, so I believe that uh, our squeal and our noise is actually coming from the oscillator or something like that up front, but uh, we'll go through and uh, check it out anyways. If we look here, we've got first IF, primary and secondary, and second IF secondary and then second IF primary I'm not sure where that is and then we have secondary third IF so basically the procedure tells you to go in order and adjust these all right so we'll check them out and we'll see where we can get now this is upside down so the orientation would be like that matching up to the radio as we can see so, I'll put it that way, and we'll see what we can get. Now here's the problem I'm running into. That is, the only tool I have that will work with this right now as it stands is this goofy metal nut driver. These things are so hard to turn that you basically can't turn them with anything plastic. I tried to make up plastic tool and it just rounded it out there's just not enough not enough strength so you really need that special fiber tool if I ever see one I, I'm going to score that so anyhow I come up here first IF primary which is going to be right here I'll try to get on it and you can listen to this try to do it by ear at first if not then what I'll do is I'll, I'll go ahead and try hooking up the meter and doing it that way right there okay that one was right on still tools okay All right, let's do our second IF which is going to be right here at the corner
also. So really these haven't moved very much. This last one has a cover over it. Not sure why they do that, but this one they keep covered. I think this is the finicky one if I remember. Yes, it is. This one is finicky. was pretty centered also. So these, the IFs, by the looks of it, have held pretty good. So now that that's done, let's uh, get everything set up now and we'll look at the uh, at the RF section or the actual oscillator and so forth. I, that's probably where my squealing is coming from, so we'll find out. All right. Okay, so here we are. We're set up for four, 1400 kilohertz, which is the, considered the high frequency compensation adjustment. Okay, so this is the high side of our RF. And it just happens to be an adjustment right back here that's in between these coils and around these tubes. As you can hear, I'm getting oscillation. And as you can also hear, very very sensitive to every little noise there is so this one's a tough one and as you can see just moving this thing There it is. And that's how touchy this is. Now, here's the problem. We go off frequency. We still get a lot of funny, funny oscillations. And I don't think I can get rid of that. I don't know. This is a difficult radio. So there is about as good as I can get with the 1400. Now the low frequency, we're going to go down here, and I believe, let me turn that down a little bit, low frequency comp is basically Six hundred, six hundred kilocycles, and it's the same adjustment basically, is what it says. And low frequency comp 
is right next to the high frequency and it is over in here in another really bad spot to get to. And we need to adjust everything down here. So we need to take our tuning down to 600 kilocycles. We need to move our frequency down to 600 kilocycles. And if all goes well, that one's in really well. That one held. So as you can see, most of our problems is in that high frequency range, and I think part of it is that capacitor might be starting to go bad. And at that frequency range, we're also picking up interference. Maybe when we get some shields on this, when it gets in a case and everything, it'll be a little bit better. But as you can hear, it's pretty strong. I don't think I need to mess with that one. So let's hook up an antenna and see what we get. I just got a little piece of wire here in the basement, so... And as you get up higher... None of it in the Alfari, but I, I know he's not the most likable guy, but he has done an amazing coaching job getting elite talent to buy into and less minutes, ground, less numbers, defense first approach. That's why they're so dangerous. If they were a talented team that didn't have a defensive commitment, you can be beat. But they're a ultra talented team with a commitment to defense. Yeah, and I didn't really think that West Virginia was going to win that game. Now they played that. Team and here we get up the by hand, it still does that oscillation. And I just don't think I'm going to be able to get rid of that without maybe working on that capacitor. Because I think that's where our problem is. Very touchy. Bennett and what he did at, at Virginia, but California. all the kids to vote on it during the course of the year. So if you're out there, not bad. There's something here. It's, this middle scale is always like this down here. about it so we're back functioning again and I guess the next part of this project here when I get a chance probably won't be for another month or so is the working on the cabinet getting that all put together and we ought to be ready to put this thing together and see how it sounds I'm pretty excited about it because uh, this thing does sound pretty good all right more to come later thanks